right, shout out to the family. Appreciate y'all for this episode. So Tiger Talk and Recap, big up to the fam. LSU gets it done, man, in, in a good capacity. Closing out the regular season, family. 42 to 30 over Texas AM. They had a lot of recruits that uh, LSU is trying to impress, bringing them in. And what an environment to do that with as Texas AM gave the Tigers a game, but really, it just showed another level. LSU went into another level, offensively speaking, in the fourth quarter, scoring 21 points and ultimately separating themselves from a upstart Texas A&M club, which is no surprise. Without their coach, Jimbo Fisher, who got fired, Texas, all, Texas A&M always gives LSU a good matchup. So big ups to the fam. Appreciate y'all, man. And this one, man, yeah, Jaden Daniels, no doubt about it to me. Has solidified itself as the premier Heisman Trophy candidate. A lot of his numbers are better than Joe Burrow's numbers that he had several years ago through that immaculate season when we demolished everybody. Now, of course, the thing, the difference was Joe had a defense, Jaden did. So we'll talk about that later on in the season, whether defensive coordinator Matt House should be dismissed and another guy brought in. But most certainly, we need to hit the transfer portal and just we need to build this defense up, man. We squandered a very wonderful season, offensively speaking, because of poor defense, man. Even in this game, even though they were able to get a few stops here and there, they got the interception. Greg Penn made the pick. But the defense, man, if we had a defense, LSU would have definitely been on par to win the national championship this year. Unfortunate, but fortunate in this game as they close out the regular season. Nine and three, six and two in conference play. They defeat Texas AM 42 to 30 in a good matchup. LSU's third down, five of nine on third downs versus 918 by Texas AM, 389 to 390 in total yards in the matchup. LSU had 235 yards passing versus 294 by Texas AM. And the, the tale of two Jadens at first, you thought, the Jaden that we thought would have an, an exceptional game, and he did. But Jaden Henderson really had a, a wonderful game, a game against LSU's defense, 25-35, for almost 300 yards, two touchdowns, and that Greg Penn interception. And then, of course, is Jaden Daniels, the Heisman Trophy winner, 16-24 for 235, four touchdowns, and 11 carries, or scrambles, rather, for 120 yards on the ground. He is their entire offensive system outside the skill set wide receivers, which Mr. Malik Neighbors, six catches, 122 yards and two touchdowns. So it was a phenomenal matchup. 120 yards in Jaden Downs, uh, him scrambling and, uh, versus 154 yards by LSU's rushing attack, but 120 of the 154 was all Jaden Daniels. So it just goes to show you how impactful he is to what they're doing. And despite the fact that the Aggies did a wonderful job in their attempt to minimize LSU having the ball, they held it for almost 37 minutes of the game versus 23-21 by LSU still wasn't enough because Jaden Daniels, when he has the ball in his hands, he makes it happen for them. So like I said, it was a terrific performance and like we talked about Malik but Brian Thomas had a really good game five catches 58 yards in the score we seen a Kyron Lacey had one catch and that was for a touchdown but Malik neighbor solidifying himself as a serious candidate for the Blitnikoff uh he should be definitely up there like we mentioned Harold Perkins on defense finished with nine tackles a half a sack in that thing and shout out to Edgerin Cooper man he had eight tackles in a sack Three of Solo, the kids from Covington, and he played a wonderful game. Uh, Edgerin Cooper for the Texas a and He should have he stayed here at the LSU, man. He probably got a little bit more. He definitely would have been needed on our defense, man. But uh, LSU gets it done, man, in a splendid fashion, man. We're able to take care of business here and move on. So let's go in. Let, let me kind of get some of the family members' thoughts on this game, man. What bowl game you guys think LSU could be lined up for? Let's kind of think about bowl games. And as the season is over for LSU, 
what potential and my my thing is I think that no doubt about it. I believe that Jane Daniels wins the Heisman Trophy. But what's the what you what do you guys think in the projections in terms of what do you think the bowl game projections would be for LSU going into this uh bowl season as we go bowling? Now before you do, let me show you this article right here. This is coming by Weird Daily, the Daily Advertiser. Their thoughts on who they believe uh, LSU will be playing in the bowl game. USA Today Sports rely on Quest Bowl versus Notre Dame. Eric Smith says that LSU will face Notre Dame in the rely on Quest Bowl on January 4th, 1st in Tampa, Florida. If that happens, it'll be the first time LSU coach Brian Kelly will face Notre Dame since leaving South Bend for Baton Rouge in 21. Interesting. ESPN Tax Slayer Gator Bowl versus North Carolina or the Relia Quest Bowl against Notre Dame. They believe that as well. Fox Sports says the Relia Quest Bowl versus Notre Dame. Action Network says Relia Quest Bowl versus Notre Dame. 24 7 Sports says the Relia Quest Bowl versus Notre Dame. So it's kind of a consensus on it. They're thinking it'll be the Relia Quest Bowl or will face off in Jaden Dames plays his final season as LSU's quarterback and boy oh boy man if we only had a defense right all right shout out to the fam man uh in this matchup uh what's up uh Ro, what's happening bro he says bro give this man the Heisman in spite of the defense indeed they got Bo Nick's first hell now it's the most valuable player yeah they're trying to push that that Hicks thing on us and I don't think so I think Jaden Daniels should be the guy and if he talks about three lost quarterbacks is supposed to go to the best player, not the best team or the best player with the best team is supposed to go to the best player. That's how the shit's supposed to go. And usually hmm, we'll see how it all goes. But yeah, they're trying to get Bo Nix in there. Truth says, I believe Matt House uses some kind of kiddie game as a a technique to carry plays like the game. (laughs) Shout out to y'all. But see, that's another thing. Uh, all these questions and things will happen after the whatever the bowl game is. A lot of people think that it'll be the real live quest bowl. It probably will be as it gets clearer and clearer. We get closer and closer to bowling season. So, but anyway, regardless of that, man, LSU was able to close out the season on a good note, stopping Texas AM in the dub 42 to 30, man, which was very promising as well. So, with that being said, we're going to get on that, man. It was a terrific game, very action packed game. Kind of frustrating, but you know what to expect with the defense at time. The defense uh, is just not a very good defense. They have stops here or there, but uh, Brian Kelly talked about the fact that the defense is has it has a lot of young players on it, but that don't excuse a lot of the missed tackles and poor angles that I see. That's just bad technique. It gets caused by bad coaching. Uh, but Madhouse is definitely a person, man. We're looking at to be an issue, man, and perhaps things change a bit with with Coach Kelly's staff going into the upcoming season. It doesn't uh, LSU retain the services of Mike Dembrock. Perhaps somebody sees Mike Dembrock there in a quest to kind of get Dembrock and bring him on to their their team. Could that possibly be something we could be facing as well? But definitely the Matt House conversation needs to be had as well. So anyway, as we get ready to get out on that, I'll let you all know. 